Hello, hello. The other day I had a video showing how I took an old 8-bit home computer from the early 80s and turned it into a modern USB keyboard. The computer was a BBC Micro and it was actually my first home computer and I learned a lot of programming by using it. And I thought today I'll show you how some of that programming works with a wonderful piece of code that I came across that I'd never seen before uh, that has a very nice effect and is programmed in a very clever and elegant way. Well, now, before we go any further, I ought to say, if you're prone to epilepsy or seizures, you might find some of this video a bit much. There is a nice Twitter account called the BBC Microbot, and if you send it a tweet, it will run your tweet on an emulator. Now, as it says here below, there's a thousand different programs that users have submitted to the bot. Many of them are not that great, but some of them are really rather clever. Way back in the olden days, one of the main BBC computer magazines, I think it was A&B Computing, used to run a one-line programming competition where you would try and write a piece of code that ran in one line. Because you could actually chain commands together using the colon, you could actually fit quite a few things in one line, especially because you could use abbreviations and substitutions and stuff like that. So in actual fact, I found this bot really rather similar. Let's have a look through some of the programs here. Now, some of them are really rather clever, and there's one that we're going to look at in particular. And some sort of cheat a little bit in an interesting way, like, let's have a look at this one. Now, notice it's drawing a bunch of lines in cyan blue and white, and now it's got a, a sort of yellow animation going on. Why is that? Well, let's just run the program from the start again. It's drawing all the lines that it's going to use. And then what it is doing is it's turning off all the colors and then turning on each one, one at a time, by replacing it with yellow. So this is not doing 3D anything. It's color cycling. Now, another example is this bouncing ball. It's quite a clever one. You see it draws a black circle and then it's drawing this flashing multicolored stuff. What's that? Well, it's going to do color cycling again. This is not a 3D ball. It's in actual fact a 2D ball that it's going to move around the screen whilst changing the colors on it. Now, once it's finished drawing all these flashing colors, it'll turn most of the colors to white and some of them to red and it's just switching the colors back and forth there is no 3D ball, it is not really rotating it is just swapping its way through the colors which is quite clever oh and yes this is very much like the Amiga bouncing ball demo of the day now the program that I thought was particularly clever is this one See, it produces this interesting mesh, and if we let it run, there's a sort of wavy pattern going on. It's really rather interesting and really rather clever. Now, is it doing this in 3D? No, no, it isn't. This is 2D. So how does it work? Well, if we just stop it a second, you'll see the mesh isn't consistent or coherent. With a lot of these programs, people have shortened or obfuscated the code, but in this case, he hasn't. And we're going to have a look at this code to see exactly how this trick is done. And it's a very clever trick and I'm extremely impressed by it. Now, it's a very short program. And it's fairly straightforward. There's only two lines that really do all the work. And there's this line and this line. And one of them ought to be quite familiar. See this? Print A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. G, F, E, D, C, B, B, B. OK, and then go to 120. Go to, fabulous statement. Um, they don't let you use it in programming these days. Go to just says, when you finished line 120 and you get to 130, go back to 120. So do 120 again and again and again and again and again. Now over here on the actual computer, well, I say actual, you know, it's emulated. This is what the screen of BBC micro would look like back in the day. 
And if you ever went to an electronic store or a computer shop and they had computers sitting out, this is what everyone would do back then. They would write a little program that went um, 10. Print. I rule. How charming. And 20. Go to 10. Very simple. So that when you run it, it will just say, I rule, I rule, I rule, all the way up the screen. Shrink. Now we'll just interrupt that. With what's the break key on you see, and if we do list the code, that was our program. If you wanted to be a bit more clever about it, you could go 10 print. Oh, I don't know. Uh, code bar. And put a semicolon at the end. And all that semicolon does is it tells it after you've written code bar on the screen, don't change to a new line. Just keep going on the same line. So we've now replaced our line 10. So if we run our program, in fact, it actually runs far too quickly for the eye to see. Even when we pause it, it's kind of going too fast for itself. Right, so we stopped it from doing that. Get back our program. It's going far too quickly. Right, we're going to make it a little more amusing and slow it down a bit so that it's useful. And we're going to introduce a line 15. Or D equals one. Sorry, it's tricky because I'm trying to remember where the keys are. Uh, one, two, five. Next T. Now all that line will do is it will count from one to 125 before going on to the next line. So when we run it, Because of the pause while it counts to 125 before going to the next line, we can actually see it progressing across the screen. And if you were a kid in Britain in the 1980s and you went into Dixon's or Curry's or any other electronic or electrical retailer that sold computers, you would type in little programs like this to harass the poor employees. And if you were really clever, you'd come up with stuff that well, they'd find very difficult to break out of. And as this pattern reaches the bottom of the screen, so it continues up. Charming. So, I did say to you that this was the heart of what that program uh, does. So let's have a look at the program. See this line? Print A, B, C, D, E, F, G, M, 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 Yeah, that. That's just going to print the letters A to H and then back down to B semicolon at the end. So it'll just continue from A, B, C, D, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, what's going on? That seems to just do that. Well, it's only supposed to print letters. Yet when we run this program, it creates a mesh. What? Well, let's have a look at this line, the other one that does some work. VDU 23. The VDU command in BBC Basic was a very powerful one indeed. It basically allowed you to send stuff to the screen. VDU stood for Visual Display Unit. And in fact, VDU was actually really clever because it would let you send stuff to just about anywhere. You could send it to the printer. You could send it to a file. Uh, you could send it out of a port on the back. So by using the VDU command, you could direct stuff to places, primarily to the screen. And that's what we're doing here. And VDU23 is quite a specific command. So let's go and have a look at it. Here's its documentation. 
PDU23, what does it do? It defines a character or performs very well. In this case, it defines a character. Because if we look back at that, PDU23 96 plus I. Let's have a look down. PDU23 32 to 255. See, there's lots of other things that VDU23 can do, but we're not using any of them. It's starting at a value of 96 plus i. Now, what's the value of i? Well, i is 1 the first time through, so actually the first volume, volume you ever use will be 97. And 97 follows between 32 and 255, so it's firmly in the realms of defined character. Interesting. So what's defining a character? On the BBC, every character, letter, sprite, was defined by an 8x8 eight eight array of dots, like this one here. We're going to look at this in more detail, because the way that you could create these things was quite clever. This little stick figure man is very simple indeed, and I promise you, although command like this looks absolutely impenetrable. It's actually very simple. This empty grid here represents the way that the BBC Micro does characters and sprites. So it's an 8x8 eight eight grid and all letters, all characters, all sprites are defined in this 8x8 eight eight pattern. There's going to be some maths here and I promise you it's nothing more than basic arithmetic. Have a look at the numbers across the top of the grid. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. This is a very straightforward binary sequence. The number at the top of each column is the sum of all the numbers to the right of it, plus 1. So column 1 is 1. Column 2 is 2, because that's 1 plus 1. Column 3 is 4, because it's 1 plus 2 equals 3 plus 1 equals 4. 8 is 4 plus 2 plus 1, 7 plus 1, and so on, until you get to 128, because 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 127. So why does this sequence matter here? Because any number can be made from a combination of other numbers, but there is only one combination by which it can happen. So, for instance, the number 7 is 1 plus 2 plus 4. There's no other combination of numbers there that can be used to make 7. So if you use the number 7, it implies that you added 1 plus 2 plus 4. So just by saying a number, you're implying a sequence of numbers. So let's choose another example. Let's say 12. You can make 12 with 8 plus 4. You can't add any other numbers to get to 12. So 12 in itself implies 8 plus 4. Now we're just going to move this grid out to the side to give us room to write some calculations. And let's have a look at the figure from the wiki. It's just a little stick figure, man. Nothing complicated at all. But we're going to go through it a pixel at a time. Right, so let's blank the grid. And we're going to draw our first pixel. Now it's in a column headed by 4. So in order to represent the pixel on that row, we would only need the number 4. So let's add a second pixel. Now that pixel is in a column headed by the number 8. So in order to represent both those pixels together, that's 4 plus 8 for a subtotal of 12. And we've got one more pixel to add in this row. And there it is in a column headed by the number 16. 4 plus 8 plus 16 gives us a total for this row of 28. And like I say, there's no other way to get numbers to total 28. So the very fact that we have the number 28 implies that pixels 4, 8 and 16 are on. The more I do this, the more obvious it will become. So we'll move down to the next row. And in fact, our next row of pixels is exactly the same as the previous one. 4 plus 8 plus 16 for a grand total of 28. Again. And thus our stick figure man's head is complete. Hurrah! The next row is his neck, and it's a single pixel in a column headed by 8, so 8 is enough to represent it. And so on to the next row, which is a lot more complicated. 
We've got a lot more squares filled in. We've got a total of seven pixels to represent here. And you'll notice we've got the main columns 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 for a grand total of 127. And the next row is just a single dot. So again, it's just 8. Now we've got two pixels with a gap. One is in the 4 column and one is in the 16 column. So that is a total of 20. Let's say there is no other way that you can reach this total. 20 can only be made from 4 and 16. There's no other way of combining any of these numbers to reach that total. And that's the magical part. And on to the next row. We've got pixels in the 32 column and the 2 column. So that's a total of 34. And our final row is two more pixels. There's one in the 1 column and one in the 64 column for a total of 65. So to map out our complete sprite of this little stick figure man, we don't need to list each individual pixel. It is enough just to have these eight numbers. 28, 28, 8, 127, 8, 20, 34, and 65. And that is enough to define this little stick figure man. So the command to define him to BBC Basic would be VDU 23 97. 97 is the number of the character we're replacing, which is lowercase a. Uh, there are empty characters reserved specifically for creating sprites and things, but because in the program that we're looking at, he's using replacements for letters, we'll just use that. And then 28, 28, 8, 1, 2, 7, 8, 20, 34, 65. And there we go. So that is the command that we would enter into the computer to have it replace the letter A with a little stick figure man. Now, as I promised you, the maths is not difficult at all. It's simple addition. And if you were going to design a series of characters, say, get some graph paper with some squares on it, write these numbers at the tops of columns, draw your pictures in the grid, and then work out the numbers. Do the arithmetic. It's that easy. If you wanted to animate them, you would create another character with a slightly different position, define it in a different space in memory, say 98, replace the letter B, and then you would just change one to the other. Now we're not even doing anything that complicated. I'm going to show you now what this program creates. So let's go back to an empty grid for a second, and we'll look at this first character. Now having a look at this, it's very simple indeed. It is just a row of pixels across the top and a column of pixels down the side. That's a very simple shape indeed. And so we can define it very easily, a lot more easily than the stick figure man. So here's the calculation for this one. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 equals 255. We've got a dot in every column. And then for the rest of them, we've just got dots in column 1. So one, 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 one. So the command to define this shape and to use it to replace letter A is VDU 23, 97, that's A, 255, that's our top row of pixels, and then one, 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 one. So our next character, let's change slightly. The column down the side has shifted in and the row across the top has shifted down one. So our first row has on the one pixel occupying it and it's in the two column. So two defines that. And then the next one's one plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen plus sixty two plus sixty four plus one two eight equals two five five. And then two's all the way down. And likewise there's our command at the bottom, VDU twenty three ninety eight. This time we've incremented it by one because we're replacing the B character now. And then two, two five five, and then two's all the way down. Easy. And I think you can see what's happening with the next character. We've shifted in one column and we've shifted down one row. So the numbers work out slightly differently. It's the four column that's occupied, but otherwise it's the same. So VDU 23, 99, because it's C we're replacing, 4, 4, 2, 5, 5, and then 4 to fill the rest. And so on, as we do the next character, we've shifted into column 8, and we're replacing character number 100, and so on. 
and so on, and so on, until we reach our last character. And there we go. 128 are the column being filled, so 128 is all the way down, and then our 255 across the bottom. So VDU 23104. 128, I'm just going to animate through each of these characters to show you what the effect of that would be, although that's actually not what the program is doing. It's more clever and more simple than that. Across and down it goes. Nice and simple. You can see the numbers change. It's quite pleasing. These eight commands that we worked out manually, instead of the program doing these longhand, by a couple of loops, it is nipping around and filling in the numbers itself automatically. And the reason it's doing that is just to save space. It's a predictable series of numbers with a mathematical relationship. If you can think of a way of nipping around and filling those in automatically, you save yourself an awful lot of code. Now, in actual fact, this code will not run more quickly. Doing it longhand is actually quicker because you're not asking the computer to work things out. You're telling it what the answer is. By minimizing the amount of code, you can get it down to something that will definitely run in less than a tweet. What an elegant and wonderful piece of code. And that's why I like it. So back with our program again. If you look closely at the screen, these characters start to look familiar. There's our A. There's B, C, D. These are the things that we've replaced the letters with. Now I'm going to put a break in this program. Just add a line, uh, 115, and add a command that says stop. Guess what stop does? It stops things. So it will run through this program. And when it gets line 115, it'll stop. And that's before it prints anything to the screen. So run, stop. Now, this may look a bit screwed up. Well, yes, because what it's trying to say is stop at line 115. But it can't display letter A correctly because it's been replaced. So if I type A on the keyboard, oh, it needs to be. Uh, lowercase, and by default it's caps lock on this. Squeeze. Remember, I've actually got a one kilogram activation weight on my caps lock key now. That was in another video. Anyway, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Uh, if we type I, J, K, L, they just come out as normal because we didn't redefine those. If we go back, H, and then from H, G, F, E, D, C, B. That's our sequence of characters. That is all this program is doing. It is displaying them across the screen endlessly. So it's not displaying any graphics at all. It's just displaying this endless stream of characters. So A, B, C, D, E. I can simulate the output of the program just by typing. And that is what the program is doing. And it's very clever indeed. If I remove this stop command and let the program run, you see it scroll down the screen the first time? Yeah. In fact, that's all it's doing. It's continually scrolling the screen. It's just displaying these substituted text characters over and over again. What a wonderful piece of code. Now, if you're wondering about all the rest of the lines of code in here, well, they're quite a clever way of doing things because instead of defining uh, these eight characters one at a time, you know, with a longhand command like the ones that we saw earlier, He's automating it into a series of loops that steps through and does it for him. And that's very elegant indeed. The effect that the code produces is very clever. And the way that the code itself is written is very clever.
there's an elegance to both that is simply wonderful. I never saw this code at the time. I I don't remember ever seeing this on a BBC Micro. And I saw an awful lot of what was written for it. I wonder where this came from. And before we go, I'm going to show you a horrible little trick of programming. Uh, I have to do it on a full emulator because it actually got sound. And this is a sound thing. Uh, There's a horrible little trick of programming that I came up with many years ago. And it was a curious and interesting little trick. It's very simple. Question mark and FE40 equals zero. That's it. It's just poking a particular value into a particular memory location. And that memory location isn't empty. You hear that annoying little whine in the background? As I press every key, it now makes a sound. Not a very elegant sound. So that was a little trip through programming on the BBC Micro. You'll be able to follow that along quite easily and an awful lot of that programming would transfer to many other machines. Obviously the VDU23 command is quite specific to the BBC but all the rest of it was almost the same on any other machine. Even what the VDU23 command did and the way it constructed characters, you would find a very similar one on most other machines. Anyway, that is enough for today. I shall bid you good day, and uh, until next time, ta-ra.